the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Good evening, AWS fans, and welcome back to New York City. We're here at AWS Financial Services Symposium. My name is Savannah Peterson, here for theCUBE, joined by some really awesome guests that I'm excited to talk to, definitely both from companies you've heard of. We've got Diego and Malcolm joining me. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to be here with you, Savannah. I mean, you're basically my co-host now. Okay. Good. So I look forward to this moment. Your second time on the show today. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling good. Well, we'll get you an IFB in your ear here soon. That'll, that'll be our next step. Diego, you have a really cool job title. And before we get into the meat of the conversation here, I just got to ask, what does the AI chief commercial officer do? It makes AI reels for our client. Uh, we innovate on behalf of our clients and we take solutions like C-Suite AI to our clients. Uh, so it's really about taking commercial solutions to our clients that we build with our partners like AWS and NVIDIA. So it's about innovation, it's about mm -hmm. solution, and it's about business value. I feel like it's going to be a title we see more and more of as, as things roll out. You mentioned C-Suite AI. Yes. You just had a huge announcement at your show. We were just saying, I can't believe it's already been three months since that. Holy moly, time is <laughs> really going. I know, it genuinely is. Gen AI is moving fast. Time is moving fast. Everything's happening. What is it? It is, <laughs> it is, it is Gen AI designed to improve the efficiency uh, and the decision-making capabilities of BAs, of, of CFOs in the C-suite. Which is something I'm sure is totally on demand. What's the response been like since you announced it? It's been amazing. Globally, we have uh, over 20 plus clients, uh, some big European banks. Uh, and there's just a lot of interest in a solution versus tooling. Tooling is important, but our clients are looking for solutions that have clear business value. No wonder you're working with someone like Malcolm then. Malcolm is fantastic. How long did it take you guys collaborating to then take this product to market? So we started, it's a great question, Savannah. We started talking about this back in October of 23. And we were This is quick. Oh, that six was months. Long ago. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. But in Gen AI Impressive. time. But in Gen AI time is. <laughs> right. <laughs> like we said. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. We were thinking, and, and we were thinking, okay, what's going on today? There was an article in the Wall Street Journal on Saturday. And the thesis of the article was that. CFOs are upset or concerned that Excel is holding back AI in finance. So check Just it out. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. Check it out. What a quote, and though, to even think I, about yeah, that. I, yeah. I, said, I, said, I can see it was a light bulb moving. Newton said, this is a gift. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I but can at, see why. But at any rate, so CFOs are looking for, uh, they're looking for ways to get answers they can't get answers to right now. Right. Enter generative AI. Enter the finance, the, the, the company with finance superpowers, Deloitte, and the domain and the engine of AI. So we're working very closely together to come up with how can we do this in a way that not only brings value to the C-suite, yeah. but also helps them understand the process so that there's some AI literacy, some AI learning along the way. So a, kind of a double... A double entendo there. Yeah, well, you, kinda, you have to do them in tandem. Otherwise, right. I mean, we're all getting, I mean, AI's been right. around for a while, but there's a literacy moment for everyone, I right. think, as yes. more and more right, tools right, are right. rolling out so fast. So yeah. it doesn't matter how deep in the ML world you are. It's it's a whole shebang. We're got you done. Six months is pretty fast to get Very a product yes. to market. And you have some really interesting design principles yes. that guide that. Can you tell me about those, Diego? Yeah, so there's a number of them. One is um, around use case definition. Mm -hmm. And use case definition, we kind of- So important. I feel like every organization is missing that very that mission critical first step sometimes yes. just yes. to figure out what we're doing. So there's strategic AI and let's call it operational AI. Strategic mm -hmm. AI starts with a business question or a business challenge, right? That's what the C-suite deals with. So we started with that. We developed the concept of an anchor prompt. An anchor prompt is a, a business challenge that's translated to a Gen AI prompt. Mm -hmm. So then we work backwards from that and say, okay, what training data do I need? to be able to answer that prompt. And we look in three categories, uh, our Deloitte uh, IP, mm -hmm. public data, and then the enterprise data. And we combine them together to fine tune a model. So you've gone from a business question to a prompt, to training data, to a tuned model. So that methodology enables us to really define that use case. And the use case can be around cost optimization, growth strategies, M&A, compliance. There's mm -hmm. a broad range of topics. Yeah. So the use case definition really starts from a business question that gets translated into a prompt 
that gets translated into a model. How, how do you walk people through that process of even understanding what business use cases are going to drive the most value quickest? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. There's some general industry use cases. Yeah. So we just finished working with insurance. Mm -hmm. So we did a whole lot. We have something called industry advantage. We understand the, the key points of value and, and kind of what are the levers and what are the challenges. So we start with that. We develop a template for the sector or, or the industry, and we bring that to our clients, and they modify it for their own unique situation. So we're developing those industry Gen AI prompts by industry and sector. So we're launching investment management here in New York next week. Congratulations. Uh, with about 20 CFOs. So we have the investment management. Think uh, BlackRock, uh, yeah. Fidelity, Vanguard, uh, insurance, we already have in progress. And now we're doing the broad banking and capital markets. Wow, that's really exciting. It is. I would say just simplifying yeah. that be for, for the rest of the world, Mr. Consultant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, break it down now. It, it's real simple. It's value and feasibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, essentially, it breaks down. You just you just create a two by two, and you and you rock and roll. And that's what we're doing. And it's been it's been so well received, Savannah. Yeah, uh, it's really exciting. That it is super exciting. Yeah. I can tell how what an exciting time it is for you. I can feel your energy even just sitting here. It's it's awesome. Yes, Malcolm at Nvidia. You know, you arguably working at the hottest company on the planet right now. Everyone probably wants to partner with you. How do you determine who to build with or, or does Deloitte come to you? How does, how does this all break down? So we sat down, like I said, back in October and we were brainstorming and, and brainstorming around how could we do, how could we create a solution that takes advantage of both of our superpowers? Yeah. And so Deloitte, arguably the best in the world in working with CFOs. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA, the engine of AI, uh, you put the two together, you have the intersection of CFO and generative AIs on top of an AWS cloud. So, I mean, I think, I think uh, that's how we got here. Right? Yeah, and I would say, you know, that, that was the aha moment. Everything we did prior to that was super important. We've had a partnership with NVIDIA for three years. I was, I was going to ask how yeah. long, because obviously you'd been hanging out if you were yeah. texting each other after the October yes. <laughs> yes. article, you know, there's this, some, yes. it was last weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've spent a lot of time in Santa Clara at NVIDIA headquarters. If you haven't yeah. been there, it's super cool. It's a must have. Yeah, I need uh, a tour. Yes, I mean, you really, definitely need yeah. a tour, Savannah. I really, oh, it is actually, really, really yeah. cool. Yeah, you got to come out. Yeah, so, well, I, I'm just up the street, Malcolm. I'm going to come down. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. I'll yeah. come to the yeah. So, so we have been working with NVIDIA for three or four years. We have actually have our own super pod for Deloitte uh, in our oh, AI yeah. center. Nice. Uh, we have done some major acquisition for NVIDIA uh, consulting companies that we did about two and a half years ago. Uh, SFL Scientific is a big acquisition we did to augment our capability. And honestly, we were just so well positioned to take advantage of the moment. Uh, so, so that's when October came. Yeah. It was on the back of three years of hard work. I was, I was going to say how, and even not just in this partnership, but how long have you been anticipating this big shift? I mean, I want to go to you first, Malcolm, because I mean, you're powering it. What, how long have you been waiting for the, the market and the world to catch up to what you've been thinking about probably for quite a while? So financial services has been using AI for a very long time. It's not new to them. Mm -hmm. Generative AI is new to everyone. And so, right. and so they're, they're going to move at a pace that's a little more cautious than other, maybe other industries, and rightly so. But the, the, uh, the, the firms that are investing in the technology and building AI literacy on their teams and leveraging, by the way, when you build uh, AI literacy and you build uh, the stack to build AIs on, it becomes a recruiting tool. I know. So right? uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of benefits to these firms, but... As, as I was saying earlier today, if you're standing on a train platform, which we all do here in New York, and the train goes flying by, you see, wow, this is happening so fast. But if you're on the train, you don't feel it. <laughs> so, if you want to be involved in generative AI, you really have to get going. And you know, what, under the hood, we're very concerned about important things like making sure that models are delivering accurate answers. And so we've architected with uh, Deloitte and with AWS a very, very, uh, we've been very thorough in the thinking and how we're going to make sure that prompts are not toxic, make sure that responses yeah. are factual. And we're using our platform, we're using elements from AWS, and then we're using the domain expertise from uh, Deloitte to deliver this. 
And I would imagine with the, uh, going into the prompting bit, you've got to be able to trust. I mean, trust has got to be really core, especially I mean, you don't tr- if you don't yeah. trust something, you won't use it. Yeah. Right. And especially right. if I'm a CFO. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. You know, in yeah. marketing land, sometimes we'll play with things, but it definitely <laughs> makes yes. a really big difference in yes. that position. But if you think about it, we've had, we, we, Diego and I have sat in our briefing center with a European brand who told us they have a gymnasium size room filled with contracts. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Every big financial firm does. And they may be PDF, but when a question comes in, somebody's got to pull that up, read it, interpret it, and then answer the question. This is one of the modules of, C, uh, of C-suite AI. It's the ability to really... And so they happen to tell us that the P&L entry for FTEs, pulling and interpreting contracts, is 4 billion euros a year. Oh, yes. just a little bit of cash. Yes. So that was one of the modules that came out yeah. of that. It's called contract intelligence. And it's the ability to take all the enterprise contracts and then tune a model with those contracts and then Smart. be able to extract intelligence from that in a number of different ways. And, and, and an immediate realization of value from totally. something like that. Yeah. And, and just time saved. Oh, absolutely. I can only imagine. And that knowledge graph is so powerful for the rest of the team. Yeah. Everybody gets smarter together faster. There's operational efficiency and then unlocking value in terms of contract terms, renegotiation. Yeah. You know, value that takes is hard to get at mm-hmm. because it's buried. Well, now it's accessible right. to you via natural language prompt. So that was an Which um, is how um, everybody wants to yes. interact with it anyway. Yes. Yes. Anything that's in the system. Oh, man. So tell me about some of the other modules. So AI Powered Insights is, is uh, our first module. And that one really brings both structured and unstructured data around those 10 uh, dimensions of value, cost, growth, profitability. It is integrated with underlying ERP systems. I think all the big systems, Oracle, SAP, mm-hmm. Salesforce, et cetera. Uh, we then extract the data and then do an AI pipeline to train the model continuously. And then you can ask those questions. Simple, beautiful UI interface. Uh, our motto is power and simplicity. It's got to have the same simplicity of some of the commercial consumer tools. It really does. But even more power because now you're running your enterprise with it. Absolutely. So that's an example of that. If I'm running a large cost optimization program, uh, you know, which many companies are, you can do scenario modeling, you can do what if analysis, and oh, then yeah. you can even then do forecasting on that using traditional ML. So that's an example that we actually have up and running. That's pretty cool. I, I can imagine it would, something that you've both touched on throughout the course of this interview is the user experience. Yes. If you're really thinking about not just the CFO, even though that's what this is tailored yes. towards, it's everyone else. Each one of those knowledge workers is going to be learning from this and increasing their AI literacy. That the simplicity of a platform, I feel like sometimes we forget that complex stuff needs to be delivered to us so simply. It needs to be digestible. Yes. Everyone on an org is looking at yes. a dashboard or whatever yes. is going on. When OpenAI launched their product, it went from you know zero to 100 million users in 60 days. Fastest adoption of anything ever. Why? Power and simplicity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're taking that same principle and adopt it to C-suite AI. No wonder. All right. Uh, I have two more questions for you. Have any of the use cases or scenarios that you've encountered, because I'm sure you've got to talk to so many different customers, have you been really surprised by anything? Or did you have a lot of knowledge going into this and you were so prepared for the moment that there's been nothing shocking? I'd say the biggest surprise, and maybe you have a different view on this, is not, uh, not that we haven't hit the mark. I think the biggest surprise is just how interested everyone is. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the desire to learn more, take the next step, it seems to be close to 100%. Okay. So, wow. That's, that's really saying something. I love that. The, the eagerness is yes. a surprise, which is cool. Would you agree, Diego? A, I would. And, and I, one of our clients in Europe said, this makes Gen AI real for me. And that's what we're all about. Yeah. Giving you like the poetry yeah. snaps right yeah. now for that. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We hear back things like that. Yes. Yeah. Makes Gen AI real for me. This is what we should be doing. Yes. You know, this is what we're hearing. Gosh, it like, gives me the feels as a nerd even. To get it. It's <laughs> nice, well, because people want a good solution and they want to go innovate and go do stuff yes. and not be stuck at this stage of what do we do next. Right. This is, you're kind of the gateway then for everybody to yes. start really realizing the benefits of this whole technological revolution. That's a great point, Savannah, which is it's an on-ramp to, yeah. to the transformation journey, right? Which is so cool. It's an easy on-ramp to get on and then you can then transform from there. 
No wonder everybody is so excited. Now I'm excited. Yep. I'm not even a CFO. Here yep. we go. Let's go, we'll, baby. We'll promote you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm not sure anybody wants me taking care of books, but that's a whole other story. I have nothing like about self-aware. Okay, last question for you because you're both fantastic guests, and I'm sure we'll have you back here. I mean, we've already had you on twice today, Malcolm, so that's a, that's a given. What do you hope to be able to say let's say a year from now when we're back at this symposium that you can't say today? You go first. Well, a number of things. One is I uh, would like to be able to disclose some of the clients we're working with because I think you're going to be super We would like great. that too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think we're going to have some great stories to share with you a year from now. Mm -hmm. And the other part to me is, is the way that our clients have surprised us. Yeah. Uh, I would love to share with you that question of client stories yeah. that have taken something that we have a very good foundation and they took it to the next level. Because I think real innovation happens at the client, right? We, we can foster it, we can bring in the foundations, but then they apply it to their business. I mean, I would argue that what you two have done together is very innovative as well. Yes. So, but I do know what you mean. Yes. When you see it out in the wild, it's a totally different. Yes. Yeah. We never know how things are going to be used until people actually use them. What about you, Malcolm? I think, I don't think there's a whole lot more to add to that. I think that's, those are the two. I think first and foremost, it's, I, I think there's one thing I would add to one being able to share a long list of successes. Yeah. Right. Where we can celebrate solving problems and to, uh, uh, essentially, what uh, the, back to your question on surprise, I know there's going to be a surprise. Uh, all right, there always is when we dig in. So it'll be interesting to see what they are. Well, I can't wait to hear about it all yeah. on the show. Yeah. Malcolm, Jago, thank you so much for taking thank the time. Thank you, man. I oh, enjoyed it. Undoubtedly a very busy day. This yes. is super exciting. I'm taking you up. I'm coming to HQ. I want to come check it out. Yeah. And thank all of you for tuning in to our 15 incredible segments here at AWS Financial Services Symposium in New York City. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Like